Season three of The Wheel of Time is likely quite a ways off, with season two ending in late 2023 and season three still in the middle of filming. But hey, it's never too early to start speculating on what we'll see. And for me, there's a few things that I would not only be pretty excited to see in season three of Amazon's Wheel of Time adaptation, but also that I really need to see to make it work. Join me today as I give you my top five things that I am excited to see in Wheel of Time season three. Make sure to smash the like button so YouTube shares this video, and while you're there, consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy Wheel of Time content. Seasons 1 and 2 of the Wheel of Time have had their ups and downs, at least from my point of view. I largely enjoyed Season 2, and I thought it was a major upgrade over Season 1, but there have been parts that I was disappointed with the adaptation, and some parts that I think they nailed. Season 3 is approaching, even if it may be well off into the future, but we do know that it will be covering mostly the story of the Shadow Rising, which just happens to be my favorite book of the entire series. So let's talk about five things that I think Amazon needs to nail to make me happy with season three. So it's no secret if you watched my season two reviews that I was unhappy with Matt's plotline. Whether it's due to the need to recast the role in the midst of shooting a season of the show, or that they were trying to follow Robert Jordan's example of making Matt miserable to read until he isn't, it's high time that Matt Cawthon had his time to shine. The ending episode to season two did see Matt blow the horn of Valir and realize that he is a hero of the horn, but for me, I'm ready to see Matt come into his own being a main character and being the fun yet powerful Matt that we see in the story. Specifically, I want to see Matt's luck start to show up in the show. They've hinted at it so far with how unlucky Matt is, so I'm hoping it turns around and we see Matt gaining his fortune. We know that Galad and Gawain are showing up this season, and I'm hoping, even though it won't be in the same circumstances that we saw in the books, I want to see Matt's fight with the two of them. Matt's a Taviran in the show, something that wasn't really mentioned at all in season two, and I'd like to start seeing the effects of that. We also know, since this is covering the events of The Shadow Rising, that it's possible that we'll be seeing Matt getting his battle memories from the Finns, or in some other way. I'm not entirely convinced that the Eelfin and Elfin will play out on the show well, or whether or not it would be too weird, or it would actually be cool to watch on screen. But if we do see it, I think that it would be amazing for Matt. But I'm also curious how they might be able to give him his memories without the Finn. It's possible that something in Roideon or something like the Tristed Doorway, but maybe not the Finns, something like that. Regardless of how it plays out, though, the one thing I absolutely need to see is Matt having a larger and more entertaining role in the story. Matt's one of the fandom's favorite characters from the books, and at this point we just haven't seen enough of him doing the things that make him that fan favorite. I'm hopeful that that will change in Season 3, and it's one of the things I am genuinely excited to see. So, I mentioned that The Shadow Rising is my favorite book from The Wheel of Time, and that is primarily because it has some of my favorite moments in the entire series in it. And one of my favorite moments from the series, and I know one of the fandom's favorite moments, is the confrontation between Nynaeve Almira and Mogideon in the Panarch's Palace in Terrabon. And I'm hopeful that we're going to see it, as we know they're filming scenes in Terrabon currently down in South Africa. We also know that Mogideon made her first appearance in the show at the end of Season 2, after having a short confrontation with Lanfear and being absolutely crazy. Leia Costa's take on Mogideon, at least from what we've seen of it so far, is very different from how she's portrayed in the books. The show Mogideon is quite a bit more unhinged, and arguably scarier. And even though Nynaeve and Mogideon haven't met in the show, I am extremely excited to see the inevitable confrontation, or at least I hope that it's inevitable. For a quick refresher, in the books, Mogideon and Nynaeve have a confrontation in the Panarch's palace, where Mogideon appears to be toying with Nynaeve, as Nynaeve frantically defends herself against Mogideon's weaves. But as time goes on, Nynaeve realizes that Mogideon is struggling to fight her off. Eventually, Nynaeve distracts Mogideon enough to shield her and best her in the fight, although the Black Aja and a Balefire Terangri all come to Mogideon's rescue and she escapes. But it's a badass moment for Nynaeve. And I think one of my favorite parts about this scene in the book, at least, is the fact that anybody that would have been seeing the fighting would have thought they were simply staring at each other across a room and would not have been able to see the weaves. But other than the fact that this scene is 
a scene I love from the books. Another reason why we really need to see it is the ending to Nynaeve season two was a bit lackluster as she was essentially unable to help in any meaningful way with anybody. I love seeing her, her hero moments and this could be a big one for her in season three. Nynaeve is my favorite character from the books, so of course I'm going to stand for her, and I hope she gets more big parts in the show. So I feel like what I'm about to mention is a bit of a weird topic, because Rand is certainly not my favorite character from The Wheel of Time. That being said, I also think he has one of the best written arcs in all of fantasy literature. His transition from a farm boy to essentially a god and dealing with trauma all along the way, it's extremely well written and it's well done. So far in the Wheel of Time TV show, I think his role has been diminished and frankly, his power levels have been nerfed a little bit. We've had moments of extreme power from other characters, but Rand is still really missing his hero moment. I've been largely okay with it, considering that if he ramps up in power too quickly, his arc might feel unearned. But that being said, it's not consistent with what his power level is supposed to be in the books. For example, with no training and little experience channeling, he was able to shield both Elaine and Egwene while they were channeling, lift them in the air, and lift a whole bunch of other stuff in the Stone of Tear. And this is after Egwene has already gone through her ramp up in power with the Shan Chan. So I only say this to point out that Rand is far from as powerful as he is in the books at this point. So I'm really hoping in season three, we see a major increase in his power levels. I want to see more Rand hero moments, and I want him to start making movements towards being the the godlike figure that he becomes, even if it's a little slower than it does in the books. My guess would be that if we get season four, we will see Rand capture Asmodian and or someone like him who will become a teacher and Rand will grow even more. But Rand should have more natural ability than what we've seen. Rand fighting and defeating Asmodian would certainly qualify for like a hero moment. So I think that it's likely that we'll see Rand not only grow in his power, but also in his authority among people as he adds the Aiel to his followers in season three. Hopefully. So I mentioned this in my last video, but it's worth repeating here. My favorite Perrin plot arc from the entire story is the Battle of the Two Rivers that happens in the Shadow Rising. And from all the news that we can gather, it appears that this is very much happening in the same way that it happened in the books. If you want to brush up on what happened in the Battle of the Two Rivers, I made a video a few years ago with Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern that shows an animated battle map, which you can find by clicking the link up here somewhere. I'll also have it linked at the end of the video and in the description. It's one of the best videos I've ever made and it's worth a rewatch. But I can't tell you how excited I am to see all of this play out on screen. I think that what I love most about this plot line is Perrin slowly becoming a leader and uniting the people of the Two Rivers. But I think Perrin quickly taking charge and showing real courage and determination to do what needs to be done is fun for me to read and I can't wait to actually watch it. It will be interesting to see in the show how they pull this off as we don't know much about the other towns in the Two Rivers. In fact, Emmons Field isn't really a place in the show, but rather the Two Rivers is the name of the town that we saw in episode one of season one. So. The other question mark I have is if they're going to incorporate Pot on Fane with the White Cloaks and also Lord Luke and Slayer, if they're going to be a part of the plot. Obviously, Slayer is Perrin's long-term foil from the books, so it makes sense to introduce him, but we just haven't heard much about it as of yet. Either way, the Battle of the Two Rivers is a part of the story that I am very excited to see in Season 3 of The Wheel of Time. So before I get to the final thing that I am excited to see in Season 3, I want to give a couple honorable mentions of things that didn't quite make this list, but I thought were worth a mention. First would be the introduction of Fayil. I dislike her in the books when we first meet her, but I grow to like her more over the course of the books, and she does go through her own really cool arc. We are getting her in Season 3, so I'm hoping that we actually like her from the get-go, or at least her arc is compelling. The next thing is the Tower schism and swan being deposed i think there's a very strong likelihood that this happens very early in the season and i'm excited to see if they choose to have tower rebels or if just swan being deposed it's also interesting to see if the black aja will play a large role in that or not i would imagine leandrin would have quite a bit to do with it and although it's something i've already sort of mentioned the further introduction of Aiel culture is something that i am very much looking forward to but let's get to my top pick
for the number one thing that I am excited to see in Wheel of Time Season 3. It is a runaway pick for me. I, I absolutely cannot wait to see the way back Teron Grial in Roideon. For those that don't know what I'm referring to, it's the glass columns in the square in Roideon that take Rand back on a history lesson, learning about the founding of the IEO people all the way back to the Age of Legends. I have always found this to be one of the most interesting bits of writing in the story, and it's a great look into the extensive lore that Robert Jordan built into these books. I cannot wait to see the culture of the IEO built bit by bit until we see them as followers of the Way of the Leaf, and we will likely see even more of the Age of Legends, which I'm always a fan of seeing. And of course, to get to the point where we see this, we have to see the ancient city of Roideon, which is another super cool thing from the books. From the unfinished buildings to the scattered Terangrial and the glass columns themselves, I am extremely excited to see this play out on screen. So those are my top five things I am excited to see in season three of The Wheel of Time. What about you? What are you excited to see? Let me know what that is in the comments of the video and make sure again to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time lore and TV content. Huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You can become a patron by heading to the link in the description. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, you will likely enjoy one of these right here, including this one on the Battle of the Two Rivers. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace out.